Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering tile entities. Tile entities are used for basically any block with a special function, for example chests, furnaces, smokers, and other functional blocks. So in order to create a tile entity we're going to need a custom block class. So let's right click on our parent package, go to new package, and type common.block. Then let's hit finish, and inside of this package we're going to create a new class. I'm going to be making a quarry for this example, but you can do anything that you want. So let's do quarry block, and this class is going to extend block. Let's hit Control shift o to import net.minecraft.block.block, and then hover over quarry block and add the constructor. We can pass in the properties from our block in it, however if we make a block class for just one kind of block, which is in my case a quarry, we can actually delete these properties, and now in our super we can type abstract block dot properties dot create, then we can pass in our material, in my case this will be iron, then a material color, in my case gray, then let's set the hardness and resistance to 15, and let's set the sound type to sound type dot metal. So this is our basic block, and the reason we actually needed to make this class is because we need to override two methods. These methods are has tile entity, and for this method we're just going to return true, because this block has a tile entity associated with it. And the other thing that we need to add is create tile entity. For now, we can leave this as it is, because first we need to create our tile entity init class. So under init, let's create a new class called tile entity types init. And in here we're going to create a public static final deferred registry of tile entity type. And let's call it tile entity type. And this is going to be equal to deferred register dot create and let's do forge registries dot tile entities and as our mod ID we can just reference our main class dot mod ID and now to this deferred register let's create some tile entities however in order to add our tile entities we need to first create the tile entity class so under common block let's create a new package let's delete the block and type T, short for tile entity, and in here I'm going to create a new class called quarry tile entity, and this is just going to extend tile entity. Let's add the constructor, and that's all that we need for this class for now. So let's go back into our tile entity init class and create a public static final registry object of tile entity type, and this is going to be of the quarry tile entity. And we're going to call this quarry tile entity type is equal to tile entity type dot register. Now we need to pass in the name, which is going to be quarry, and then we need a supplier for the tile entity. And instead of the null, we can use tile entity type dot builder dot create. However, this needs to be a supplier, so we can make it into a supplier like so. Now in here we need a tile entity, so we can do quarry tile entity colon colon new and then in here we can pass in our block so in my case block init dot quarry which we haven't made yet dot get okay so next we need to go back into our quarry entity and let's create a new constructor which is just going to call the constructor above so let's do this and now we can put tile entity types init dot quarry tile entity type dot get now in our block class instead of returning the super we can do tile entity types in it dot quarry tile entity dot get dot create then in our block in it let's register the block so let's do public static final registry object of block let's call it quarry and let's set it equal to blocks dot register quarry and then the supplier of a new quarry block now we can go back into our tile entity types and as you can see we get an error so after this bracket we're going to do dot build 
and then as the data fix type we can just pass in null. And now our tile entity is completely registered, the last thing we need to do is to go into our main class, and after blocking it we can call tile entity types in it dot tile entity types dot register bus, like so. And now we can actually add functionality to our quarry. So in our quarry tile entity class, let's make it implement itickable. And now we have to overwrite a function called tick. And this function will be run every single time the world ticks. So now let's say we just want the quarry to break the block below it. So in order to do that, we need to first get the world. So let's do this dot world. Then let's do dot set block state. And then we need to pass in the pause. And remember we want to break the block below so we can do this dot pause dot down. And then as a block state, we just do blocks dot air dot get default state. And what that's going to do, every tick is going to set the block below to air. That's actually all we need for our quarry tile entity. Now we need to create the JSONs. So let's create the block state of quarry. And this is going to reference the quarry block model. Let's fill in the lang for the quarry. Let's create the block model for the quarry like so. Let's create the item model for the quarry. Actually for the block model I'm not going to use the quarry texture, instead I'm just going to use an iron block. So for that we can do minecraft colon block, make sure this is singular, slash iron block. Now let's create the loot table, so quarry.json, and this is just going to drop our quarry. Oh, and also make sure to change this itickable to an itickable tile entity. So now we can run the game. And now that we've loaded in, if we place this block, you can see that it immediately breaks any blocks below it that we try to place. So that's going to do it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be expanding on this quarry by giving it a container and a GUI. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.